Hey y'all, um, I just finished reading Ash and Bramble by Sarah Prinius. I don't actually know how to say her last name. That's okay. Um, it was published by Harper Teen in 2015. Um, I loved it. So I came across it at the library and the inside flap says, A prince of ball, a glass slipper left behind at the stroke of midnight. The tale is told, retold, twisted, and tweaked, snipped, and stretched as it leads to happily ever after, but is not the true story. A dark fortress, a past forgotten, a life of servitude. And then it goes into a little bit more. And so it was intriguing because I love fairy tales. Um, I read lots of different retellings, and I um, that was something I studied at when I was in college. So that's why it intrigued me at first. It was really good and very, very well done. Um, so it opens up, and our main character, our protagonist, is like waking up from nothing and she has no memory of who she is um but she knows that there must have been something before but she wakes up and she's in this fortress where she is told that she's a seamstress but by the quality of her sewing skills she knows that she is not a seamstress and sewing with um other seamstresses they sit at this long table and they just sew and sew and sew and sew and sew and there's an overseer who gets mad at them when they fall behind um, and their stitches are supposed to be as small as grains of this whole ongoing routine that never gets better. They sew and sew and sew, they exercise, they eat, they shower, they go to bed, they sew and sew and sew, and it's just this ongoing repeating thing day after day after day. And she finds out that there's other servants in this fortress as well. There's, um, shoemakers and jack of all trades who do all the random stuff there's all these different pieces and the shoemaker the current shoemaker he talks about how the one before him um went crazy basically because he had to make 12 dancing slippers night after night after night right and then this shoemaker comes in one day all like upset because he has to make glass slippers and how is he gonna make glass slippers he's not a glass blower he's a shoemaker you know and so it's setting this up for the reader to recognize all these pieces of fairy tales eventually our protagonist who for a while goes by the name pin because she was a seamstress and you use pins she and the shoemaker who then we call shoe for most of the book they kind of team up and plan an escape um from the fortress and the fortress is not just run by these overseers but ultimately at the top is the godmother and she is the one who orders all these things to be made by the servants um she has magic the fortress is surrounded by a big wall covered in brambles and thorns and the godmother is this very terrifying woman in the story um I thought that was so interesting to have the godmother essentially be the bad guy. And as the story goes on, you find out there's a lot more to this world and to the fairy tales and um, to the characters as well. They figure out a little bit of their befores, their backstory, and ultimately they try to change things. Um, I'm trying to not give spoilers in this book review. So I loved it because it fed pieces of fairy tales together. It changed the way, nah, not changed the way, it opens your view of stories and fairy tales more so that you like, just think about it more. And I think about them differently all the time. And like I said, I, it's something that I studied. Um, but she just makes you think about this whole concept of these stories that we retell and that we've been retelling for generations and tweaking a little bit. Um, but like I said, it was super, super well done. The characters were very deep. The ideas were explained well. The writing was good. Um, the whole thing was just done really nicely. Setting as well, it was not hard to like envision this. And I've talked before about how I think that it's easier for me to envision things even with even when there's not a lot of world building from the author. But this one I feel like was really simple. You could easily imagine the fortress, the forest, the city, all these different places that our protagonist, Pin and Shu, um, where they end up. There was, she pulls in the um, stepmother and stepsisters. She pulls in the story of the shoemaker and cobbler and the elves. Um, 
there's references, obviously, to the 12 dancing princesses from the shoemaker who went crazy from making 12 slippers night after night after night. Um, so there's all these different pieces that come together. Like, at one point, the jack-of-all-trades are working on all these mattresses and the pea, you know? So she pulls in all these other little fairy tales that don't then play a big part, but it sets up this world, and for someone familiar with fairy tales, it makes it really cool. Um, Pin was a great character. She's very much her own person. She's independent. She's a great heroine. Um, yeah, definitely she's very strong. She um, and Shu obviously have a type of relationship um, that develops as the story goes on, but then there's these other characters as well, including a prince. And there's this very, like, it's not a bad love triangle. I am sick of love triangles, but it's not really like that. And at one point, though, um, somebody says to her, they're like, well, you've got to pick one of them. And she goes, or I don't. And I love that she points out that, no, she doesn't have to pick one of them. And she can just keep going on being pin. And who cares if she doesn't have a man? I just loved that even in this fairy tale world, she's like, no, I don't have to pick. I can continue to just be my own person. So that was... Um, I liked it a lot, and um, I highly recommend it, really highly recommend it. It was clean, very well done, entertaining, fun, makes you think. Like I said, she's a great protagonist, um, just a really good one. I just wish that they hadn't done this for the cover, because at one point, yes, she but it didn't have the open back and it wasn't supposed to look so modern and so I wish they wouldn't try to like modernify and sexify book covers it's just so ridiculous I don't know who's in charge of that but somebody tell them to cut it out um anyway this if you love fairy tales read it if you don't love fairy tales try it anyway because like I said the writing was really really good I hope to be able to read more from Sarah um yeah Definitely check this one out. It was really great. Anyway, keep reading.